Hi everyone and welcome back to the AFC Bournemouth career mode. Now I know I said in my last episode on this career mode that I probably wouldn't be doing one for a while because I was frustrated at the game but I decided to play some off camera, some, some of the games off camera. You can see currently sitting in 8th position in the championship. We've got Forrest up next who are two places above us in 6th. Just to point off them at the moment and only uh, two points off the Welsh side, Cardiff City, who are sitting in fifth place at the moment in, of course, that playoff zone. And ultimately, do I think we can still get automatic promotion? I do. We definitely still have a chance with, you know, especially with players like Josh King, Arnout Dan Juma, Philip Billing, you know, Johnny Evans. Like, we've got a very good squad and we should be finishing in that automatic spot. Maybe not winning the title, maybe not automatic promotion at all, but we will see. But I have played a bunch of games off camera, I think six in total, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so let's get into the highlights straight away. So because of the stupid stamina glitch, uh, we had to rotate the side, also switch the formation to a 5-2-3 because we had more fit centre-backs than, well, than outfield players, I guess. Uh, and despite having a much more defensively solid formation, you could say, we conceded the first chance. Lewis Graben hit the side netting, of course, ex-Bournemouth striker. I might call him a legend, I don't know. Uh, but King and Lerma link up well. King forces a good save out of Diallo. There's me in my full kit. Yeah, great job, EA. But then Dan Juma got his corner in. King missed his header, but it fell to Chris Metham, who, uh, yeah, it's actually a really nice goal, actually. It looks a bit scabby when you, you watch it in full motion, but then you see the replay. It fell to Metham, and he just took it around the defender and scored. It was really nice. And then Lerma played in Grisicki, who got the start in this game. He got the ball into King. And I'm not sure how that didn't go in. I don't actually know what even happened there. Uh, and then Nottingham Forest had their own chance. Lerma with a great challenge, and he got he, he got penalised for that. Thankfully, Lewis Graben stepped up and did uh, what I do every time I shoot, to be honest. Uh, and then, yeah, we th that was our slice of luck, pretty much. So we had to go down the other end and you know, make that slice of luck count for something. And look at this beautiful play. Billing, Dan Juma, and King linking up. And then absolute beauty is all I can use to describe that. King with the armband due to Cook's absence today. I was going to give it to Big Be Big Begovic, but um, nah, Josh King, man. If he's going to play like that with the armband, I don't know why he doesn't deserve it, to be honest. That is an absolute cracker from the Norwegian man himself. Oh, what a banger. And uh, I think it's worth saying that I played all these games at 3 a.m. this morning so yeah it's, I, I was actually pretty good to saying what seeing as what time it was sorry we went into the break 2-0 up so I think that's a pretty good representation uh, and then in the second half Grisicki has played in down the wing and you know they thought he was gonna cut back because he doesn't have much pace but then he just runs down the wing he's got Dan Juma in the box he wrong foots the keeper with a nice little chip or sort of air lob over the goalkeeper. It was a very nice finish, 3-0 against Forrest, so then I decided to bring on Kilkenny, and you can just be the judge of this. His first three involvements just resulted in him losing the ball. It was pretty bad, um, but then he did a nice little passage of play to find Jefferson Lerma there, so fair play. Then we were kind of on the back foot. Taylor did really well here to get the shot on Begovic, and, you know, we were in danger of losing the clean sheet, which is really what I was all all up in arms about, uh, and then Josh King should have finished this, that's, that's poor, that could have been 4-0, that would have been amazing and it would have probably sealed the clean sheet, then they go down the other end from that shocking miss from Joshua King and bag it with Cafu, which is quite annoying, you know, to lose the clean sheet, all that, but in the end, we got a very nice 3-1 win against Forrest, who are, gonna, who are supposed to be one of our, you know, rivals for getting promotion this season. So I'm very happy that we won that game. Very, very happy. And then we had Swansea City and um, the automatic kick se kit selection, man. I, I can't. I, what is that? What is that? Why would it not pick our home kit? I, I can't. I, I don't know what that, that is. Just, I, I, yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, so I made myself a promise in the end. Um... After we score our first goal, I'm just going to sim the rest of the game because I'm confident that we would win. And I thought this was going to be the moment, but King did that. And, yeah, so much for a finesse shot, eh? Um, anyway, we, we did manage to get the first goal 13 minutes in. 
Loma into King. Lovely cut. Lovely finish. And, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, we're 1-0 up. Oh, that's right. I need to sim the rest of the game. So I jump into the sim, and not much happened. And, you know, they, they missed a chance there. I think it was Dahanda, or however you pronounce that name, that missed that chance. We then make it 2-0. Another goal from Joshua King, who has been our main man this season. He's been fantastic. Then I jump to the end result. We won 2-0. Thanks to a double from Josh King. Very nice to see. Good result at the Liberty Stadium against a top team like Swansea. And here's the table after just two big, big, fat wins. Very juicy wins. We are sitting in fourth position. Uh, and we are 10 points off top spot Birmingham City, who have not lost a game. But they have drawn six. So there you go. But yeah, we're back up into the sort of sort of spots where we're supposed to be. I think we could concede less goals, but it's just when the CPU decide to turn into like Bayern Munich of 2013, every single time they just have one time where they just turn into that. It's really annoying. And then we have Bristol City up next. And uh, yeah, they couldn't score their first chance here six minutes in. However, Begovic and Evans just completely spazzed. Um, it was a misplaced pass, a misplaced... I don't know, run from Evans. It wasn't even a run. He just stood there. And then Wells got it and scored. King should have scored here. He got it back on his right. And it was a tame effort. Bentley caught it quite easily, unfortunately. And uh, there was some good link-up play here between Cook, Brooks, and King. And this little moment of magic from Brooks is what makes you question, you know, dropping him. Because, you know, I've not been impressed with him this season. But look at this. Cook does well to bring it outside to Brooks, and then his weak foot cross is inch perfect for King. And then the clearance is straight to Lewis Cook, who cuts around the defender and smashes it into the top corner. And I'd focus on the goal, but what is this, man? I <laughs> Brooks is like, get out of there. Uh, anyway, yeah, Lewis Cook, that's a class goal, man. He just took it in his stride around the goalkeeper and then spanked it into the top corner. Anyway, uh, Bristol City then score an EA's goal, pretty much. I don't know how no one closed down Nucky Wells there. Begovic made a good save and then let that in. I, I don't know, man. And then Cotter tackled Josh King, subsequent to giving him the ball. I, I don't know. How is that even possible? Stanislas got the ball into King with four minutes to go, but unfortunately the goalkeeper punched it away, and yeah, I wasn't very happy about that, so I just jumped to the result, and we drew two all anyway. And then we had Coventry City up next, uh, a team that were fighting for survival, and uh, we got off to a great start. Under five minutes in, Don Solanke, you know, got the give and go from Jefferson Lerma, and then spanked it into the top corner. Well, it wasn't really top corner, it was kind of the middle side of the goal, I guess. Uh, nothing came from this, but Jack Stacey, look at this run. This was incredible. He got past uh, the man with incredible strength. Unfortunately, there was no options or were no options for him, so he couldn't do anything on, on that front. The 1-2 between Grisicki and Lundstrom should have resulted in a second goal in the 23rd minute, and Grisicki missed a sitter with his weak foot. Yep. Honestly, that was terrible. Then David Brooks, I mean, this is classic David Brooks, you know, he, he did that incredible cross before, but how is he, how, what is that, He's he, he, the defender didn't even get the ball and he just ran straight over it, how is that, oh, it's horrible, man, uh, and then the second half was as uneventful as a nun's bedroom, so we brought on Surridge, Requelma and Aforba, three youngsters, and they got off to a great start here. Requelma and Aforba linking up there. They play a 1-2. Requelma then with a beautiful back heel side pass into Surridge. And then I should have gone alone with Surridge, but I looked for Requelma. And then Aforba couldn't get the follow-up. But then there was some more good link-up play between Surridge and Requelma. I just, oh, one touch away from a Surridge assist and a Requelma goal. That would have been some something special. But um, Stacey then tackles the number seven for Coventry and subsequently ends the game. And we got a 1-0 win, clean sheet. A nice little 1-0 win was very nice. And the final, win in, uh, final game of these highlights, I should say, was a game against Luton Town. Uh, and Brooks actually had a shot here, something I don't see very often. It was saved, and then King gave it straight back to Bree, and uh, that, that was the chance gone, unfortunately. Then Dan Juma had King in support, uh, and then he took it in his stride and got tackled. I don't know how that's a foul. I don't know what happens in this entire passage of play, to be honest. Billing gets over the free kick. Uh, for some reason, David Brooks is in that shooting position, and then King is offside. 
I just, I don't know what that was just there. But then, a defensive clearance hits Brooks square in the face. King with a poor touch, so he has to give it to Lewis Cook. Cook looks to find King again, and it was saved by Sluger. Great name there. Uh, and we can see the final chance of the half. They nearly score. The ball into Lee turns the defender, and thankfully Begovic was there. Then the second half, David Brooks into Kotar. Kotar has King in support. Then Lewis Cook into Dan Juma. Surely this is 1-0. Nope, Dan Juma misses an absolute sitter. I don't know how he missed that. Anyway, David Brooks in again down this uh, right-hand side. Then he plays it into Josh King. He will not make the same mistake as Arnout, Dan Juma, Groeneveld. David Brooks with another assist. He's been racking them up in fairness, but it's just because Josh King has been doing stuff like that. He's absolutely hammered that in off the bar. That's a beautiful goal. And then Joris Kotar take a bow. This is a truly world-class goal. Billing knocked it into him. The touch over the defender. Oh, please. Just stop it, Kotar. That is a beautiful goal. Look at that. The touch through the defender, if anything. Then he turns the number 15 on a sixpence and slots it into the back of the net. Uh, I didn't get much sleep last night, so I'm sorry if my commentary is a bit stale. Morel scores here, 2-1, 20 minutes to go. I was very mad that we lost the clean sheet. I brought on Surridge again because I was very impressed with his performance against Coventry, his involvement, I guess. So straight from kickoff after conceding, David Brooks, you know what he's going to do here. He's going to cut back, and then he looks into the centre, Sam Surridge turns the defender, gets it over him, and dips before hitting the back of the net. That is a sensational goal. Sam Surridge with his first in this career mode. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a striker headache for your boy because Sam Surridge scores this. What a solo goal that is. A fantastic finish there. 4-1 with 10 minutes to go. Surridge gets his second of the game. We've got him, Solanke and King all scoring goals this season. So, yeah, it's, it's very difficult selecting enough, you know, game time for each player, but um, that's the end of these highlights, ending it with a 4-1 win against Luton Town, that is a very nice result, and I think that was actually a very successful highlights reel in general, if you get what I mean. So we now have a game away against Barnsley, and uh, I have rotated the side a little bit, I've brought in Chris Metham, he's at 80 rated on form, so of course I'm not going to drop him, we've got 85 rated Johnny Evans, I don't want him captain. Um, but you can see on form, since the plus 5, he's 85 rated. That is unreal. I am going to give the captaincy to Begovic, actually. I think it's probably fair. He's, what, 33? Yep, 33. And, uh, yeah, I think he deserves it. He's at 78, which is pretty good. We've got Cook and Kotar, who both have very low sharpness. You know, 5 collectively. It's not great. So I've, I've brought Kotar in because he was so good. Scored that absolute banger in uh, those highlights, if you remember. Brooks is at 82, which baffles me because he's been trash. Um, but you know he, he's, you know he's gotten a lot of assists, I guess. But he's got like one goal, so it's nothing to shout about. So I brought in Stanislas just to give him a go, I guess. And uh, yeah, obviously got Dan Juma, Josh King, who's currently at an 82. Anyway, yeah, enough rambling on. Let's get into the game and hopefully get three points. Uh, uh, sorry, just to say I have brought Surridge to the bench. He scored two against Luton. I've got to bring him in. All right, we're underway. Schmidt kicks us off against Barnsley here. I didn't do live com because I just... Well, I mean, with the highlights, I didn't do live com. And I didn't do it because I just... I kind of wanted to see what I was like off camera, and I think I was actually much better. Um, I don't know if that's a coincidence, but, um, yeah. Now, that, it was good to get just a few wins on the board. It's good for our confidence. Uh, and we should be beating Barnsley pretty convincingly as Stanislas is in behind here. Josh King... Oh, Josh King stopped his run. Lewis Cook... Oh, I'm so autistic. Oh, my God. What a run from Josh King. He burst through the middle there. It was a great ball from Stanislas. Josh King smashes it in. Never in doubt. Easy finish. 11 minutes in. And we're 1-0 up. Nice. Honestly, Josh King has been unreal, man. He has been superb for us. Honestly, I, 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 it's been insane. He's got 18 goals in like 17 games or something ridiculous like that. It's actually unreal. He has been quite sensational. And I can't stress that enough, man. He has been incredible. So, uh, yeah, thank you, King. You're a blessing. Um, and here he is on the ball. He gives it to Kotar. 
into Dan Juma, who tries to cut around. It was well, well read by the defender, except that he took out Dan Juma, and now we've got a pen. With one problem! I'm trash at pens, so this could go wrong. I trust Stanislas on the penalty, and now that I've said that, he will miss. Never mind, he puts it the right way. Green time, the goalkeeper was sent the wrong way. And 17 and a half minutes in, we are 2-0 up. This is a great start to the game. Junior Stanislas scores. I want to whitewash, boys. Remember when we got promoted from the championship in 2015? Yeah, last time we beat Birmingham 8-0. So I, w I actually want a similar result to that today against Barnsley. I would not mind it. Second half underway now. I want a quick start, boys. But hang on, we could be in. Billings missed from there. Are you serious? Dan Juma's cross. Lewis Cook finishes it. That's how you finish Philip Billing. Yeah, take notes. Anyway, I think now's a good time. Even though Josh King has had a good game... I think the second half he's been very lazy, so I'm going to bring Surridge on for him up top, just over an hour in. 3-0 up, you know, it's very, very good, but um, I feel like a couple of things we could could be doing better. Uh, I think our front three have been all-round disappointing today, I'd say. Surridge gets on the end of that, that's brilliant. He's got Dan Juma in support, got to find him. Dan Juma just knocks it past the goalkeeper, that's terrible reactions from the Barnsley man in between the sticks and with 20 minutes on the clock we are 4-0 up and Surridge comes on and makes an impact. I think this guy might be eclipsing Solanke just because he has a little more mobility than Solanke does. Just a little more mobility. What are you doing? Away she goes. No Billing why can you not pass a ball like a regular human being? Well done Mepham. Please win it back. Thank you. There we go. Now we've got the ball. Dan Jimmy should have made that run like 20 years ago, mate. Cook on the ball. No real good options. Um, Surridge trying to hold it up. Cook should have made a better run. He did make a run anyway. Lewis Cook. Holy cow, he's got two. Yeah, he has got two. I forgot about that earlier goal he scored. And now we're 5-0 up. There we go, boys. Now we're finding the back of the net. And uh, I think... We're going to bring off Kotar, who's had a disappointing game today. We're going to give Lundstrom a go. And I'm also going to bring on Lerma for Billing, because he's also had a very, very poor game today. I mean, he's won the ball back a few times, but overall, he, his passing completion rate is just horrendous. Can we score six in a match for the first time in this career mode? I would love it if we could. Barnsley on paper are going to be one of the easiest teams we verse. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We will see. Here's that chance we might have. Stanislas on the ball. Easy cross into the box. And we get that goal. John Lundstrom with his first touch. What is the Barnsley defence doing, man? You might say, oh, Rob, you've put the sliders to an easier mode or something like that. Or you might have toned down the difficulty. No, Barnsley are just shite, man. Like, we just got in so easily here. Stanislas, Lundstrom onside. The number 30 is just slacking off big time. And Lundstrom pokes it home. Very nice finish. Very nice goal from the boys. Very easy goal from the boys all round. I want seven, boys. Come on. Come on. Make it seven. Stanislas, stay ahead of your man. Stanislas for his second. Oh, he's done it in off the post. Oh, seven nil. I don't think we will get eight, but it, it would be funny if we did, you know, like that Birmingham win. You know, I think it would just scream that we're getting back up. We have scored so many goals this season. We are the top scoring team in the comp for a reason. Blow your whistle, it's not that difficult. There we go. 7-0 win against Barnsley. You love to see it. And we are currently third in the championship table. Almost halfway through the season. We will be halfway through once we've played two more games, which is against Sheffield Wednesday and against Stoke City. Interesting. I think the Sheffield Wednesday game is going to be quite simple i mean they don't have a great squad let's check where they are oh no they're 13 that's not too bad so we could be in with a rough game also i forgot to tell you sorry um we did simulate a game just then and uh we won one nil away against qpr because we had a tired squad and josh king scored the winner in the 18th minute which was quite good so yeah that yeah I, I didn't couldn't be bothered to show you the whole sim or anything like that but she'll be right we are currently third in the table 
And uh, yeah, we're actually pretty close to the January transfer window where we have a few contracts to renew, maybe players to bring in. I, I don't know, though. That's for you guys to decide, but I don't want to hear Sancho and Mbappe all that crap because we, we won't be able to sign that caliber of player for like four or five seasons minimum. So anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's how we're tracking along. But we will play one more game this episode against, of course, Sheffield Wednesday. Or should I do it in highlight form? You know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it in highlight form. I'm going to play both the uh, Sheffield Wednesday and Stoke City game in highlight form. Just before that, however, Cristiano Ronaldo of Piemonte Calcio or Juventus has won the 2020 Ballon d'Or at the age of 35. What a machine. I'm not a fan of the way that Ronaldo is, you know, egotistical and all that. But you know what? He deserves respect on his name. Even in FIFA, mate. It, what a machine, man. Like I just said. Wow. Fair play. Ronaldo wins the 2020 Ballon d'Or in the Bournemouth career mode. And against Sheffield Wednesday, I did switch up the team. I just felt like it. Uh, I managed to... Well, I didn't manage. I decided to change it to a 4-1-3-2 with Surridge starting up top alongside Joshua King. I also brought Metham in again. He's just been too good to drop. Uh, Rico's been off recently, so I brought Smith in as well. Speaking of Smith, he nods it into Dan Juma. Lovely back heel to King. King into Surridge. He plays it into Dan Juma, and you know what's going to happen here. Bang! Right into the bottom corner, and Dan Juma scores. And Sam Surridge with another goal involvement. He has been revolutionary. He's he's that backup striker now. He has been incredible. You better hope we get in the Prem. He's going to want a big contract. Cook's shot is tamed by Westwood and that's actually it for the first half. Legit. Like it was this is actually a pretty boring game. Uh, and yeah, second half we started pretty well. Cook in behind to Surridge. Oh, that is too good. Sam Surridge, I'll say it again. You better hope we get in the Prem next season because this guy, I don't know, he's only 67 rated, but he could be something special. He could be Pop Smoke's true love. That is a poor joke. Anyway, great ball in behind by, I think, Cook that was. Correct me if I'm wrong. But Sam Surridge with a lovely little dink. Oh, I just, I can't stop watching it. It's, look at that, boom. Weak foot. That's three-star weak foot. Kiss my ass. That's right in the corner. Beautiful goal from Surridge. And then to ruin the clean sheet, which I thought was going to be intact, Izzy Brown decides to nod that one in. It's a great header in fairness. you still got 20 minutes left in, in the match. you think there's going to be heaps more action, but that's actually it. 2-1, definitely cannot complain with that. That is a good result. We get three points, and that's all I'm worried about in the end. And then against Stoke City, another home game. You think, oh, they're 19th in the league. We're starting King up top. This has got to be an easy win, right? Well... Rodrigo Requelma misses a sitter seven and a half minutes in. I mean, it's not the fact that it was a sitter. It's the fact that he skied it so badly. Then Grasitsky had a really tamed effort same, saved by Loney, Angus Gunn. And then, from absolutely nowhere, 28 minutes in, Cousins dinks Begovic after somehow getting into a one-on-one -on -one situation, which I was very pissed about. I was not happy that we conceded that goal. And then, Stokes, pretty much their only two chances of the game. They score. Wind banks that one into the top corner. He absolutely wellied it. It was a great finish in fairness, but yeah, they had two shots and they scored both of them. So just before half time, it was pivotal that we got the goal. Grasitsky's ball in and Josh King didn't shoot like I told him to. He just controlled it and Gunn missed it, which I'm clueless to, but I'm going to take it. I am not complaining. And then an hour into the match, Kotar into Lundstrom who spanks it in off the post. I can't think of many words. My vocabulary is very limited. Uh, but John Lundstrom does not have a limited strike on that weak foot, apparently. Five-star weak foot, of course. Brilliant strike. And we were not done there. There were barely any chances in this game. Pretty much all the chances, especially in the second half, were pretty much scored. Kotar into Stanislas. Lundstrom, Kotar, bang! 3-2. We have turned it around. And that is pure genius from your boy. It ain't slider changes or whatever you guys might try to think of. That is pure beauty. 
coming back from 2-0 down and winning 3-2 against Stoke. That is a huge three points, especially from the position we were in at some point in that game. I am about to show you guys the individual player stats for AFC Bournemouth this season, but this is our league position on the 20th of December. We have been flawless in this episode. We have been genuinely fantastic. You know, it's it's been such a good episode. I've really enjoyed the highlights style that we've we've done in games, but I completely understand if people prefer live com. Even though with our one live com game we did score seven, uh, that was quite sensational. But we are top of the league. Even though we had a slow start to the season, sitting like 17th after four games or, or something like that, uh, we're currently sitting in first, 23 games, 13 wins, 6 draws, 4 losses. We have scored 50 goals, that's more than 2 goals a game. We have conceded 25, you know, it's 4 more than second place Watford there, probably a little more strong at the back than us. We're top of the league and we've conceded the most in the top 5, so... Yeah, second top in the top seven in terms of goals against. But hey, if we're outscoring teams and if we're just staying top of the league with a game in hand on Watford and Brentford, I cannot complain. That is fantastic. What a turnaround the boys have given us. Okay, so we are here looking at the stats for pretty much... I, th I think this is the first time I've shown you guys the all-competition stats for the entire series so far, I believe. Oh no, I showed you uh, David Brooks's the other other day, I think. Anyway, uh, yeah, so these are the most appearances. We've got Begovic, Billing, King, Dan Juma, Stacey, you know, all these sorts of players that you'd expect to be up here. In terms of top goal scorers, that is the easiest one of the lot. Joshua King, in the championship, he's played 20, scored 20, and assisted one. He has been insane. He's been insane, genuinely amazing. Uh, he is, oh, he's amazing. He's just so good. Like I don't have any other words for it. Dan Juma has been decent, a little inconsistent, but six goals, nine assists is always appreciated. Lewis Cook has been scoring quite a few goals of late. He has been really good. Five goals, four assists. He's become a regular starter for us in that midfield, along with Philip Billing, 85 rated on form, not just because he's got that plus five next to him. That's how much he's grown already this season which is, I mean, amazing. <laughs> How insane is that? Um, and yeah, so he's 80 rated base. He's usually got around 84, 85 rating on uh, on form, which is really good. Three goals, two assists, ain't bad. We've got Juris Kotar, who's been a very good young player for us. Uh, and of course, the main man, Sam Surridge. He's got six goal involvements in six games, which is incredible. Stanislas has been a handy little player. Seven goal involvements in nine games in the championship. I don't mind that. That's pretty good. Solanke has done his part, I guess, but I still prefer Surridge, to be honest. We've, of course, got Lundstrom, who's slowly but surely improving. He started pretty poorly. He's been pretty inconsistent, but that game against Stoke, goal and an assist, incredible. Uh, Mepham, I've much preferred to the likes of Steve Cook, wherever he is. Steven, there we go. Yeah, 6.8 average rating, and let's let's compare that to that of Mepham, 6.8, 7 in, on average. So, you know, you can probably see why I prefer him. We've got Rico there with a the goal. Brooks only with one goal, man. He's really been underwhelming. Should we sell him this January? Because if not, I'm going to sell him if we make it into the Prem or not. Like, I'm sorry, guys. He's just... No, he, he's not He's not right for the team. He's not. We've got Smudger with a goal and an assist. Grisicki with a goal and two assists. Fair enough. And anyone else with assists? You know, you got a four bar. I'm showing you all the stats, by the way. N not just the standout ones. We've got Raquelma with an assist, which is nice. Lerma, four assists. Very, very good. He's been a very good rotational player. When you've got a 77 rated, 26 year old Colombian international in midfield on your bench, you know you've got a darn good squad. And uh, yeah, I I've been impressed with Stacey as well. I think he's been fantastic. Johnny Evans has been a fantastic signing as well. Really solid at the back there. He'll even be here next season, to be honest. He'll hopefully be partnering Metham with Cook as the backup. I think that'd be good. Even if we make it to the Prem, this squad... Hang on. This squad is genuinely incredible for a Premier League squad. You know that you've got a good squad. If that's your squad, even in the Premier League, I'd be happy with that squad. You know, with the signing of Evans, Billings' incredible growth... 
Lundstrom in there. If we take out Brooks and sign someone that's currently on my shortlist, and that is, well, my main targets are Neres, David Neres of Ajax, who would cost around 40 to 50 mil, and Crepin Diata. I'm not sure how much he would cost, but he is a player that I've seen a few times. He is apparently very quick. Oh, there you go. 92 to 99 acceleration. 90 to 98 sprint speed. Um, yeah. I'm also looking to replace Begovic if we make it into the Premier League. Because even though he's 75 rated and he's done well this season, well enough, I should say, 33 years of age. Nah, man. I, th I think he'd probably be make a very decent backup for a couple of seasons. And, of course, I'm looking at Ake, the prodigal son. Of course I am. No, you can't blame me for that. Anyway, so, yeah, uh, in the next episode, we will be finishing off December's games and probably maybe looking at some targets for the transfer window. But, you know, like, who do I get, man? Uh, the squad's great, and I'm not selling Brooks in the championship. He can still produce a moment of magic if he's feeling up to it. But he will not be starting in the Premier League if we make it. Trust me on that one. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like. Please subscribe. If you enjoyed the highlight style that I used throughout most of this episode, please let me know and give me feedback on that because I would really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, either way, enjoy your day, and I will see you in the next video.